My name is Chad Delita from Dallas, Texas. And I brought my son with me. Woo -hoo. His first time with big game, especially African big game. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Trip of a lifetime. Uh -huh. And uh, real excited to get this first day going. Okay guys, I'm gonna once again give you a little safety briefing here on the range. So we have a lot of different calibers out here, but the basic anatomy and safety principles for a rifle remain the same across all weapon categories, okay? Firstly, some basic anatomy of the weapon. So it's a rifle. This is a bolt action rifle. The back end here is called the butt. The central part here is the stock, your grip, your trigger guard, the trigger. It's called a bolt action rifle because of the action. It's like a door, you know, when you bolt a door, forward, close, open, back. This is the bolt. Where you are pointing the rifle is very, very important. Where the muzzle is pointing, this is the end that the dead maker comes out of. So it's very important to remember where it is pointing when you are holding a rifle. You can hold it to the side, point it to the ground when you're hunting, or up in the air, this isn't strictly a safe position, but it's better than pointing it at somebody. Okay, please keep your ear protection in at all times. We will let you guys know when we are about to fire. Make sure your ear protection is in. It does get a bit loud. We have a sink, uh, sink roof here, so it reverberates the sound quite, quite a lot. Uh, when we're shooting the big calibers, we'll step in front of it. But please make sure your ear protection is on and remember your muscle, muzzle awareness. Very important when you're handling a firearm. We'll save that for when we actually zero it. I think it's like... So I'm going to give you some instructions when you're shooting that refer to the um, anatomy of the rifle. Elbows down, nice and relaxed. There you go. Sit perfectly still. Do you see it there? With this hand, lift it up. Don't be scared of it, you won't break it. It's a, all the way up, all the way up. And back, forward, down. There we go. Now that, remember the safety. When this is loaded, safety on. When you're ready to shoot, flip it forward. Forward is fire, back is safe. Hey, good job. You hit it. Nice. Do you want to do it again? Do you want to take a break? One dead and power. Wanna take a break? Good. So it's on safe now. Oh, it's on safe now. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. That's it. Now it's on fire. So now you can take the shot. But the grey horn bull, he sings a song. He whistles. So the safety works slightly differently. You see the little red dot there? So when you, that's safe. And then you just flip it forward. It's out. Take your time and squeeze it off. So that's pretty on point. Okay. Just over it.
But there's some corn. Uh, it looks like they're flying over the Uh, okay, oh, he's coming at us. Fire. Hey, which one's fire? Really? Oh, it is fire. Oh, it is fire. Okay, so hold it up. Okay. And up. Just lead it a little bit. Oh, there's more. So it's two figures, front and back. Uh, okay, there's, uh, there's four coming towards you, Ross. Maybe they turn on your right uh, towards the cruisers. The car, maybe get off there and have them take the car out. They definitely see the car. Remember, just uh, head straight overhead, yeah. turn, look that way, look that way, wait for him to come over. Dragging, he has his own outfit and everything. Nice far in front. Go. Give it a nice lead and aim high. Aim high. Look at them and you see the wings kind of have like cuts in them. So it's been shot at before. Uh -huh. About a foot in front. Okay, that was a hardy guard, but I mean it's all... Give it to them. Yes, that's one done. Again. Too far. January, February, March. Yeah, I saw a job there in the Lucerne land. Did you guys find it? Yep. Oh, yeah. You see, what happens when you shoot them properly, they fall and they die. And then you, you get a lack of Khan steak. Who <laughs> made a kill? Yeah. Okay, give it. That one's down. Yeah. That one's down. Oh, there's another one. A little bit deeper in. I hope it's still alive. Come, come here to where I'm pointing. Uh, this one's circling. It's probably its mate that you guys dropped there. It's looking for Okay, now go straight forward. Okay, this hey, one Chris, over, over cool? here. Uh, nice. Wrestle him! Oh my gosh! Carson, you, you do it! Grab it! Wring yeah. its neck! Punch it in the face! It's still alive, Ross. <laughs> no, it's good. The girl's got it. I just you wring its neck, punch it in the face. <laughs> I mean, empty. It's lighting is gorgeous. Hey, but you got your got a, a nice, a pretty pair. Yeah, a pretty pair. Oh, I'm happy with that. So we're here with Chase on the first day, first evening at Montero Safaris, and it's Chase's fourth fourth trip here with us. He's been trying to get some of these Egyptian geese down and managed to get a nice brace of geese this evening. So very happy after many years of trying. We've had some success on the geese. Well done, Chase. Thank you. Absolutely. Good shooting. I mean, considering we were only out here, what, 45 minutes? Not even. Not even. Not even. A couple of flyovers, some good birds, and now to retire to the campfire and a good whiskey. Absolutely. Hell of a night. Lovely birds. Is that part of the waiver? Hey? Did we sign off on that already? Yes. I want you to get out of the water. Oh my god. Now you see, that's a challenger book. That's the job. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there's some ostrich on that that's high on your list. Yeah. Um, just before we take a stalk, they're about 500, 600 yards from here. So we're going to go around the bush because they could got good um, eyesight. So that's why we stop here. The sun is in the back, so they haven't seen us yet. So we're going to take a stalk and see how close we can get. Um, see if we can get into range and take the shot. And like I showed you with the, the photo of where the vital mm -hmm. saw is quite in front. So just go up with the leg. Just up the leg. Just a little bit in front of that. Arm. Perfect. That's where you want to shoot it. I see it. If it's looking towards us, just where the neck comes into the body. Yeah. That's where you want to take the shot. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So, yeah. Let's go. Big boom. <laughs> Yeah, right, was you? Hey, where's the bush you How do you feel about a shot? Oh, felt great, looking yeah. right at me. He was, he was growling, he was puffing at it. Like, <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Took but it was a nice belly crawl. I, I, I knew something was wrong, but I just couldn't yeah, figure yeah, out what was it. And uh, humans aren't on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um, I think let's give him a chance. Um, hey, either way. We'll track it, and then we can start searching for it. Okay. But we got to pay for it anyways, huh? <laughs> but it's enough about 150, 150 160 yards, yeah. yeah 150 yards yeah I, seven, I, mean. mm. I see that's sick another shot Here's blood here guys. Right here on the floor. See there's some drops there. It's bleeding very nice. You can see it. Look there. There it is. Jeez. There's your blue all the best. Congratulations. Congratulations. Jeez. Oh wow. Look at that. That's a beautiful bull. Yeah, good size. Oh, that's beautiful. This is an old mature bull. You can see how it's been worn off. Look, uh, look here. Wow. The, the nice thing I could see, if uh, the bull bee's horns passes the ears, then yeah. you know, it's a quali tr trophy quality. And you can see this thing, how far it's passing. Yeah. Nice old mature bull, black here, with the females and the young bulls have a brown stripe here. This is black. You can see the stripes here. It's an old fighter. This is what you want. This is kind of the yeah. This is a beautiful trophy. This is something to be proud of. You can see there was a fighter. Look at all the chips here. You can see all the wow. chip marks. This is the kind of bulls that you want. 
Did they get twice? No, no. How big of that one is for the blue wildebeest? Let's see. Huh? Uh, 27 and a half, 28. Congratulations. Thank first, you. First animal ever. Yeah. Look how cute he is, eh? I was laying on the ground floating. Really? With yeah. your elbows up? What, a, one elbow up. Yeah. I'm telling you. Okay, so we have a little tradition here at Monterra um, to say thank you, to recognize the sacrifice the animal has made and what an amazing blessing and opportunity it is to be out here in Africa hunting these amazing animals and to respect this animal that's paid the ultimate price and the sacrifice to support the farm, to support the environment and to support our conservation efforts here. So we take our hats off. We say, Khanyehud Khanyeval means go good, go well. Thank you for paying the ultimate price so that we can enjoy this beautiful creation and this amazing opportunity to enjoy God's splendor. Amen. Amen. Khanyehud Khanyeval. And then on a little bit of a positive note, it's your first, or your first ever animal except some pigs in, in, in the States and yeah. rodents. So there's a bit of a tradition. Um, we have to uh, give you a little bit of blood on your face and you're going to be eating the, the nuts uh, of it. So, um, it's, it's, it's a tradition, a very old tradition, I'm going to be very honest. I don't know where it comes from or where it started. But the oldest, the person that organizes the hunt, the, per, the oldest person on the hunt, mm -hmm. and the person that guided you are allowed to initiate you. And it would be my honor to welcome you to the hunting fraternity here. And we're going to give Ross the opportunity there. Congratulations, young man. Woo. And the next part is the nuts, but we'll do that yeah. over lunch. <laughs> Congrats, I good job, great shot. This is the last part of the tradition is grab it. I don't want a little pissy bite. Okay. I want a proper proper bite and swallow it and show, us the, show it to the camera. Mom, Cheers. Here we go. Don't think about it. Chew it off. I can't help. <laughs> Carl, you're almost halfway there. No, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, okay, it's good. You've done okay. it. You did it. You I, did it. I, I put my mouth on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good job. My name's Ruud Rotenbach. We're hunting here at Pontero Safaris. And uh, this morning I'm hunting with Peyton here Wait. in Texas. And what a beautiful morning. Oh my goodness. We started early at 8 o'clock. This beautiful Blue Willoughby's bull was standing just there and I told Peyton, let's take a chance. And this beautiful old bull stood there the whole time, even though they saw us, out of curiosity, he gave us the shot. Yep. And uh, Peyton, please tell us the whole story, what happened and give us your view. Jeez, whenever we first spotted it, how far were we? Like a couple hundred yards at about. least. We started making our way up, scared they were gonna see us, hiding behind some bush. Um, how far was the initial shot? Like 150? Yeah. I had to crawl out prone on the ground, took a half breath and just did what I was taught, you know? Well, an excellent shot with an extra rifle, 375 H&H, &H, and it ran about 60 yards. Yeah. And you found your beautiful trophy. So on behalf of Montero Safaris, congratulations. I appreciate you. You shot an absolutely beautiful old blue beast bull. Uh, you can see the width of the horns, the age, everything, what makes this bull so unique. How old do you think this guy this is? This is all but about 10 years old. About 10, 10, 10 years old. Yeah, you can see it's worn off, and this is nice, and um, it worked hard. It's yeah. an old fighter, you can see the scars on the face, and that's what we wanted. A nice, old, presentable, trophy, blue wool beast bull. So, Peyton, yeah, congratulations. I appreciate you, man. Well done. Thank you. Absolutely amazing, amazing experience. This is just what we expected and planned when we came to Africa for a hunt. Very first kill in yeah. Africa, uh, a mature blue wildebeest. That's, uh, I couldn't be more proud, and I'm glad we got to share this experience uh, with Montero Safari. So thank you guys for everything. Absolutely I had a great time. Look forward to do some more. Oh yeah, still early in the morning. Still early, <laughs> right? Plenty of daylight.
actually looking for golden wildebeest and as you know the Inyalas they like to stay in the riverbed and we just saw a stunner of Inyala bull in the open of all places in one of our open plains so it's too good of a chance to to okay, pass it up so we're gonna go have a look and you know, hopefully we can get a nice Inyala. Okay, so Chase, here, here we are on the first morning. We've barely been out an hour. Um, like I said previously, we are over two miles away from the river and never expected to see a beautiful old Inyala bull. Um, he's quite old. You can see the dentations in his hips and he's loose some hair there and he's a, he's a phenomenal bull and we'll uh, get his measurements shortly. Uh, but congratulations and uh, good shot, good shooting. It Thank was you. quite quick. Uh, but if you won't mind, tell us what happened. Yeah, so yeah, we were heading out driving for a golden uh, wildebeest this morning, and like Almain said, yeah, first hour, uh, you know, we were just driving, this this beautiful bull was standing underneath the stand, um, so we drove up, uh, got out, kind of stalked a little bit on foot, uh, first shot he gave us was standing right behind a uh, pole, so he kind of had to move around, change uh, locations, and yeah, he presented us, presented us a beautiful um, just shot, and... He dropped you know, right there. Dropped right there on the spot. Didn't run. Uh, so, yeah, beautiful, beautiful bull. So, yeah, congratulations, thank you. dude. Really, really nice. Congratulations. And a lot more to look forward to on the first day, first morning. And you, uh, um, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, KT chases in the lead. <laughs> Good job. 
So Bailey, it's been barely nine minutes, but you shot a beautiful big, big ass sable. Let's go see if we can find it. Oh, they just shot something. Oh, here's the blood. You can see the blood there. Now this is the first ca camera, you know, being at camera stand and blood trailing at the same time. Bailey just made a beautiful shot on a very, very, very big sable bull and um, we haven't found him yet but I'm pretty sure he'll be the biggest bull we've shot on this property. Um, the arrow a little bit quartering away, she made a fantastic shot right in the vital triangle but she hit the opposite sh uh, shoulder blade. Um, and the sable ran off with the, the, the bolt all the way buried to the fletching. So we're just struggling a little bit with blood. But uh, looking back on the footage, we are 100% sure that we'll find them shortly. You see just that curve of this horn right <laughs> into the tree. It's right there. <laughs> Bailey, this thing is a monster. Seriously, seriously, it's a monster. Look at that. Go ahead, look at that. That is an absolutely beast of a sable. He is stunning. <laughs> Hi, buddy. That is what you call a sable, Bailey. That is what you call a sable. Look at that. That is an absolute beast of a sable. You can see he's worked his ridges all the way flat. He's broken his tips. He's probably broken off a couple of good inches, but I, this is, we'll measure him, but this is probably 46, 47 inches. I might be yeah. under guessing him a little bit, but he's worked down all of his rings here. You can see the secondary growth. He's an absolutely, absolute stunner of a bull. Congratulations. Thank you. This is most definitely probably the biggest sable we've taken on this ranch so and you doing it of all people <laughs> congratulations That's thank beautiful. you see the the stress mm -hmm. marks here the color differences he's worked his ridges all the way down some second secondary growth down there that is that is a absolutely beaut a beaut that is fantastic. Thank you. I want to beat the previous biggest bull, so I have to say 46 and a half just to, just to beat it. Chase, what do you say? I'll say it's 48 and three quarters. Bailey? Uh, 46 even. 46 even? Yes. And thank you. <laughs> Oh, collecting all the glory. I know. So you have to... Husband, supporting husband. Beautiful show. So Ross, give us an estimate. He's filming you. We, we have to have it on uh, on uh, official. You know Hi, maybe. Just, just with my backpack's there on the back. Yeah. You know with my measuring tape. Put your yeah. guess on just the, uh, get the, the link. I have to say 46 and a half. He's 48 and what? Seven eighths? Yep, three quarters. Three quarters. Mm -hmm. Bailey, what did you say? 46 dead on. You said 47. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 46 and 7 eighths. So normally we don't do this in the field. But, <laughs> but <laughs> we have to. We have to. Uh, Here, I'm set the record straight. Okay. So we're over. So what's that 42? We're over. 46 and? 47 and? Nice one. 47 and 2 eighths. Uh, 47 and 2 eighths. Just for the... He looks very symmetrical though. He looks very fast. Oh yeah. I mean, he thoroughly enjoyed his last meal. I will say that. <laughs> He's bloated. Okay, so there's 41. 
I would call that 46 and 7 eighths. He's just shy. Hey! <laughs> so, the other one's 46. You are officially <laughs> the record holder yes. of the biggest sable <laughs> shop on Montero Safaris. Your mom's a badass, okay? Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so, today we're here with Bailey. Uh, from Dallas, Texas. Uh, when I met you guys four years ago, I never thought we'll be sitting here next to this uh, absolute, I don't know what to call him, beaut of a, a, a bull. Um, congratulations, first and foremost, on a stunning, stunning animal. There's not a lot of people that have uh, a sable of this caliper in their collection, and um, well done. We uh, opted to do it with the crossbow, and uh, was an interesting in the afternoon. And when the bull finally came in and then went out and came in and came out and finally gave us a beautiful broadside shot at around about 20 meters, um, I could see the nerves have calmed down and we got a beautiful, beautiful sable at the end of it. And yeah, well, we'll give you a chance. Tell us what happened. <laughs> um, just waited for the right time and then pulled the trigger. Followed him out. How, how far? We're probably about 60 meters away from the, from the blind. And then here he was, and he's a stud. Tell me more about the sable antelope. So the sables get their name from the curvature of their horns, sim uh, very similar to a saber. Uh, initially, when they named the animals long before we were here, so they picked a picked the name sable antelope. They are absolutely stunning bulls. They're actually known as the prince of the bushveld. Uh, very interesting animal. It's very similar to your rowan, your gemsbuck, if you look at the face, uh, but they just stand out completely on their own. In our English, it's called a sable, but the interesting fact in Afrikaans, my native language, we call it a swart wit pens. Uh, directly translated means black, white stomach. Now, your Latin for it is hip, um, hippostrachus nigger nigger. At the moment we're on our way to the northern part of the property uh, just maybe we'll catch a nice bull bathing in the sun hopefully we we got our fingers crossed so but we got Chris Kyle here so he's a he's a the man with one gun is always the dangerous man we're gonna look for that gray ghost today mm -hmm. let's see if we can make him come out of the woodwork We'll be back with the zebra, maybe ostrich. I'm taking the ball. What do you want? We're gonna go and walk in at a on the runway where the airplanes land, and go and try and shoot a pig or impala for you. So you want a pig? Yeah. Are you gonna hug it? Maybe. <laughs> Whenever it's dead. I think there's a nice, there's a nice boy in front of my house as well. Yeah. So we're here on uh, the morning of uh, day two with the Hardy family and um, his uh, daughter has uh, opted to try and get her first impala or first African animal. So we have a, a tree stand, if you will, 
that's about 13 and a half, 14 foot off the ground and it overlooks a waterhall just about 100 yards or so uh, to the south and um, yeah we're gonna get you guys up there and uh, she did really well on the shooting range and uh, we'll christen a new hunter, huntress hopefully in a couple of hours. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing to be able to bring our daughters out here. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to both of them getting an Impala Warthog, you know, and like Almain said, christening them, you know, their first first blood. So, you know. I mean, besides the rap, but. Best of luck to us and. Yeah. You excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. It's just a grateful off being like that. My dad took me and Bailey. They worked their butt off for years. So. It's a great thing. Thank God we got the chairs up here. Yep. On the runway. So we're gonna go and see if we can get a spot there. You know, Eddie and Wade can see if they come in and have to talk you through it. So here we are, morning two, and uh, we're very excited as we can see. <laughs> I didn't ever even ask, how old are you? Ten. I'm so we're going to turn gonna... 11 this year. Okay, well you're ten. Alright, so we're going to try and get uh, Cass and her first an African animal, her first animal ever, at the tender age of ten. She has proven herself at the shooting range, so we're going to go down here to our runway and see if we can... Uh, see a nice little warthog or impala or something but i know you said you want a warthog you want a warthog so we're gonna try and get a warthog <laughs> and um yeah hopefully we're successful do you think it's gonna happen yes. let's do it give me a first one let's go We go to school five days after her birthday. Oh, that's not fun. <laughs> and Carson always seems to get off of school for Columbus Day for her birthday. Right here,
shows your hand like this. Shows your hand like this, or you're still shaking. Yeah. A little bit. So that's a drill and dump. A drill and dump. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we had our opportunity on a nice little warthog ball, but uh, unfortunately we missed. The, the excitement and the adrenaline got a little bit to us, but it's all good. It's better to miss than to wound. You know, it gives us another opportunity, uh, another chance, another opportunity to do it all over again. <laughs> so we see the pigs aren't too far off, so we're going to give it another go. Huh? Okay. Let's do it. Hold it like this. Look at that. You got the shakes. Hmm? So that's what we call buck fever. And you're experiencing it. Okay, so after the first attempt and the miss, we barely sat 10 minutes and there's another beautiful big warthog that came in. And you made a good shot, it looks like it. So we um, just called in the vehicle, you can hear it coming in the trackers and we gave it 15 minutes and let's go see if we can find it. How do you feel? I feel scared. Scared? Mm -hmm. Not excited? I, mean, I am excited, but not so scared. Ah, oh, don't be scared. Let's go see if we can find it, okay? So you shot it at the right spot. It's all shoulder when it's full of blood. But, you know, I think I missed it when I was running through the thicket, but you know, you shoot to try and hit it, you know. Um, it didn't cross over, over here. Then it must have turned up. It must have come down and when I shot, it went up. Man, you can come get us. We uh, saw a couple young boars here, but nothing really for for shooting. So, yeah, let's carry on. Mawe. <laughs> Mawe. What does that mean? Oh, my on my way. Yeah. Not even respectable pigs there. That's the sick, lame and lazy. We had a, had a couple look looks at a few pigs. Uh, some young boars, something for the for the for the youngsters, but um, yeah, we just saw females with babies, then, two young boars that that could go. But uh, keeping our ethics in mind for hunting and the future, those boars have quite a long life ahead of them. Hopefully, if they make it, they can be something special one day, and that's you know the kind of hunting ethic that we try and impart on our youngsters to think about the future and the next hunt. And um, with that in mind, we're going to pass up these pigs. And carry on looking for a nice, nice old Impala Ram or a, or, a or a baboon, or a baboon. So yeah, we'll see you guys there. Uh, we just spotted some springbuck. Um, so wind is quite quiet now. It's nice and hot out. They're very relaxed. So uh, they're quite into in one of our planes, a little bit into a distance, but it's fine. We will make our way there and then uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. What do you think about it? I think it's going to be fun, either way. <laughs> you think we're going to get it? Oh yeah, let's go get one. Let's go get one.
shoulder, you see that black line? Okay, just wait for him to turn broadside. <laughs> Fucking acting here. <laughs> oh, it's great, man. Look at it. He's absolutely beautiful, brother. Oh, yeah, he's just giving out his last life. Well done on your, on your first small, small game. Yeah. We've only done a big game up till now, and he's absolutely gorgeous. For, for the bush felt, that's the biggest you're going to get. They don't get any bigger than that. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, that is wild. It's so cool, man. OK, rub your fingers from the back till up there, and then you smell your hand. Like, go deep, man. Yeah, we do that. Man, it smells like cotton candy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fair cotton that. candy. It's, it's wild. It's extremely beautiful, my man. Wow. This is our national animal. So yeah. It's, it's, it's cool that you took it. Willy, Willy coming. So uh, the stalk went quite well. Um, we just took a quick stalk uh, through the bush, approaching our one of our plain areas where springbuck predominantly likes to live. Um, this is the common springbuck. Um, this is uh, South Africa's national animal. I think it's a brilliant trophy to take. He's absolutely beautiful. He's hooking at the top. He's a he has thick horns. Um, we uh, we use a 308 Winchester. Uh, the shot was about 90 yards. Yeah, there was two of them walking together. Uh, had to wait for one of them to clear. You know, both of them broadside one by one. Had to wait for it to get past the other one. And once it got clear, just before he got behind the big brush, took the shot. This is the common springbok. Um, in South Africa, you'll find four different types. It's the common, we got the black, uh, white, and the copper copper springbok and all of them are indigenous to South African provinces so it's there's no weird breeding um, but the, the common is probably the most a unique one to take so I think we did a, a brilliant job today and well Chris did all the work so <laughs> he's making it easy for us well done my man thank you sir thank you
Okay, today I'm hunting with Chad. Chad, we hunted this specific bull for three days, this specific black one, and like I told you, this is one of a kind, and it's one of a kind that you only can get here in Montero, and they provided you with this absolutely stunning bull. You know, strange facts, like <coughs> these nine different patterns of giraffe right around Africa. He's got no subspecies, but nine no. different patterns. And this is one of the different species. This, this black, black, black. It looks like a wall of um, been poured over it. So another interesting fact, like uh, the neck, it's got exactly the same amount of vertebras like a human kind. Really? Yeah. And the other thing is, is when babies are born, it's the heaviest of all the mammals. And it has to fall two meters, <laughs> what, eight feet. Wow. So that is all the interesting facts about giraffes. But this one, congratulations. This is absolutely one of a kind bull. Like we told you, there's not many guys that can have the privilege to shoot amazing bull like this, a dark black one. So please tell us, how was the feeling? How did it go? Man, you know, it's, it's hard to put into words when, when you get to the, to, the, to the moment. And I think that's what happened here was, um, it was an emotional uh, situation. I think it kind of came over me all at the all the same time, even though we've been looking for it for a while. Um, absolutely, one of the best experiences of my life. I thank you guys for 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 giving me this opportunity, and um, I really want to thank Montera. This was an amazing an amazing hunt, and you did a great job helping me all along the way. Perfect. Congratulations hey, on a beautiful. Thank you, sir. I appreciate well you. Absolutely. Chad, I just wanted to join in the fun here and uh, just say congratulations on an absolute stun of a bull. I think this is the darkest bull we've ever ever taken on this it's property. Magnificent. And, um, you know, I think you, you really uh, put it into words. A lot of people think about it and, you know, oh, this and that. But the moment you see these animals, it's, it's, it's just awe-inspiring. But um, a lot of people have a misunderstanding and some people that will see this video think, how can you shoot a giraffe? Right. Well, quite easily and and it's they're not bulletproof you know right. it's, it's you can shoot them but giraffes are not endangered in right. any shape or form and that's why i wanted to interject here and join you guys and say congratulations to rudy as well but for people out there giraffes are not endangered in right. any shape or form um, they are, are are not critically endangered they're not even threatened species at the moment so this is part of conservation now right. a giraffe bull turns black like this with age um, there is a little bit of genes connected to it, but this bull is, is just outside of his prime. And the problem is giraffes never stop growing. So they will go sterile, but they'll still keep on growing. So then they will kill the younger challenger bulls and you never get babies. So what you did here is taking out an old bull that has spread his genes and giving the younger generation time or, or opportunity to add into the population. Right. So what you did here is conservation. Sure. Hunting is conservation and conservation is hunting. Because we love these animals, right. we need to manage them. And if it isn't for international hunters, Americans, Swiss, wherever you come from, coming and spending your dollars here, it means we protect them and we keep them. Is the old say, saying, if it pays, it stays. Right. And what you did here, sir, is, is securing the giraffe population on Montero and in southern, uh, southern South Africa as well. So sure. I just want to get in there and just make that point clear that uh, what we did here today, there is no threatened, there right. is no endangered, they're not uh, on the brink of extinction in any shape or form. But we actually did here is an act of conservation by the pure point of they go sterile, uh, but they keep on growing, they get this dark color, they don't mate anymore further, and then they dominate the younger bulls, and then you get crossbreeding, inter uh, um, interbreeding, and stuff like that. So, congratulations on a ginormous, beautiful black bull. I think the darkest bull we've taken here, like I mentioned. Right. Rudy, good PHing, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you for here. Yeah. And good job, oh, sir. Thank you, sir. Good job. I appreciate you guys. Once in a lifetime, absolute opportunity. I really appreciate you guys. Well Thank done. you. Rudy, thanks a lot, man. Beautiful, beautiful bull. Shoshonosa, <laughs>
Yes, Adli, the first African animal. Congratulations, great shot. So as always, the first touch is yours. 
nice old ram. Perfect shot. That's what we want. Nice job. Thank you. Okay, so take a knee. We just like to show our respect and our gratitude. We say Khani Khut Khani Val means go good, go well. Thank you for many years of breeding. Thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy our tradition and our culture and our heritage of hunting that many families can eat. Amen. Okay. Good job. Your first animal ever. Hey, and your first African animal. <laughs> and now you get the blood on your face. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right, so Adli, here we are with your first African animal. Uh, second day hunting. Yeah. We missed the opportunity on a on a baboon yesterday, but this morning it all came together. Nice old Impala ram came in, presented you a slight quartering away shot. You listened to the advice that was given to you just behind the shoulder and he didn't run 80 yards. One shot, clean kill, your first African animal. Congratulations, we're so very proud of you. And now you become one of us, one of the, the hunting fraternity. So it's always a special privilege to, to indoctrinate a new hunter or huntress in this case into the hunting fraternity and what a way to do it with your first animal in Africa, a beautiful old impala ram, the right animal to take and yeah, we're very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> uh, good morning on uh, day three, Wednesday. I'm here with Mr. Chase Hardy. We're going to try our luck on uh, one of our other bow stands and uh, hopefully get a beautiful golden wildebeest. Um, it's a little bit late in the morning, but I'm still positive I think we'll, we'll get it done. And um, yeah, we'll sit until lunch and hopefully bag you a beautiful golden wildebeest. How do you think? What do you think? I'm excited. I haven't, my first one, first, first, uh, first bow hunt here in mm. Africa. So uh, definitely looking forward to the opportunity and mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, you know, Bush blesses us and we'll end, end the morning on a positive note. Great. Let's get in the stand and settled in and, uh, and uh, see what brings, what the bush brings us. Sounds good. Let's go. So that happened um, very, very quickly. Um, two beautiful golden wildebeest bulls came in. Uh, we weren't expecting them to be here no. so fast, but um, the beauty of Montero, we have plenty of game and uh, plenty of opportunities. Um, unfortunately, it happened so quick in the angle, I'm not sure we got it on footage, um, the impact shot, but uh, we'll have a look and see what we can do with it. But you made a, it looks like a beautiful shot. Um, it's. Uh, Five minutes past ten, we're going to give them fifteen, and then we'll go have a look at it. But it yeah. looked great. <laughs> Show us your hands. There's a little bit of adrenaline. It, or not yeah, really. it's coming down now, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, that they they walked in, presented a perfect shot for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I had to make it quick. They were starting to walk behind some brush, um, so before they got behind any branches or any obstacles, mm -hmm. yeah, take um, the shot. I took the shot. Didn't really, I mean, yeah, I apologize for not waiting for the cameraman <laughs> to, to get behind me, but um, yeah, the way that he angled in and it walked, was just it, that, yeah, yeah it, it was just kind of pushing me towards the wall, so 
Um, no, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm confident. It was a solid shot. I saw him running off. I could see the blood, so I'm quite sure. But, um, you know, Murphy's a bitch sometimes. So <laughs> until we see it, I won't say congratulations. But it looked like a good shot. Um, like I said, we'll give him a little bit of time and then we'll go see if we can find it. There's your arrow, Chase. Some good blood there. But we saw him running and we could see him bleeding well. Yeah. So you can see how his hooves are split open <clears throat> and digging into the ground. It's a good indication that he's hurt, you know, and he's running down here. He is going to die, but... Yeah, we're going to Kuru Circle. On. Yeah. So Chase, after a while, you yeah. finally found some blood on your golden border beast. Let's uh, let's keep on pushing and hopefully find him soon. He's but I've been tracking it now for I don't know, two plus hours. Yeah. Went all the way through, but they came out of no blood. Yeah, but he hit it, he shot too far back between the stomach and the lungs. So yeah, we're sitting under a tree at one o'clock um, after we took the trail uh, of Chase's Blue Vol the Beast at 10 o'clock. Uh, um, the, the arrow went well, uh, deployed properly and everything, but we're suspecting it went between the lungs and the stomach. Uh, we found only found the first drops of blood or evidence of blood about two kilometers into the into the follow-up um, We are around about at the six kilometer mark at the moment and decided to take a little bit of a break here under the tree um, While our tracker Eddie that has been doing a phenomenal job so far keeping the track um, It's just trying to find the track again after a herd of zebra uh, Run in uh, spooked and ran in front of us. So uh, Yeah, let's uh, hope we can pick up the track and, and, and hopefully put a bullet in it or another arrow into it or something and at least recover uh, recover the trophy. But fingers crossed. It's disheartening, obviously, you know, not making the, the best shot that I could have made. Um, I felt good about the shot, um, but obviously based on the evidence right now, you know, it wasn't a solid shot. So paying the price for it, but, you know, hopefully, yeah, we can pick up the the spore again and continue tracking it tracking it
All the guns, brother. This morning we were searching for what's left on the menu. Waterbuck, Sable, Kudu, Gebsbach, Zebra. Basically so it's going to be uh, yeah, basically <laughs> everything. So <laughs> let's see what the bush gives us. We're going for the menu. The clean night. sweet. This is the beginning of the fourth quarter, boys. Yeah, yeah. In case you were you're missing the score. Chad Jr. shot a bless buck. He shot the front left leg off. Um, but it still froze nice blood. We did see it now and tried to run after it. But he's seen the tickets yesterday. The tracker caught up with us and now we're going to start tracking the blood again. So Peyton got a shot on a blesbuck, 200 yards about, and I guess he missed low because he broke off the left front leg, so he's running with three legs, and so they're trying to track him right now. Jan and Rudy are tracking. We went tracking for an hour, still on the blood, but he won't go down apparently. We might have missed the vitals. A little bit of blood, not a lot of blood. But the young can do it if anybody can do it. That's what I've learned. And now I'm driving a reverse left-handed stick. Oh man, just like, just like old times. Stick with the left hand, not many of you have done that before. I told you we were almost there. There's another road there. Uh -huh. Cross around Asika, Jan, he ran to this, this chick make a loop, a leapfrog it, uh -huh. and come back. And as we come back, Jan was then, Junior and myself was in there, and while we were walking, I see, hey, here is lying, take it. He was down, took him, and he jumped up, and I shot a shot, and he ran, and we ran after it, and then it stood still, and we could get the final kill. I'm telling you, it was wild. Tracking, I don't even know how many miles. Dude, ran, lost hours. the blood trail. Just going off tracks, then we ran into a bunch of grass, couldn't find the tracks. Had to split up. We just found him under the trees, luckily. Junior, finally. Oh my goodness. After a long morning's talk, tracking actually, thanks to a good faithful tracker, Jan, yeah. we found this beautiful, mature, old best buck ram. You can see the horns have worn off. Look at the yellowish here on the roof. You can see that shows maturity. Mm -hmm. That's how you see, and you can see the gray. It already comes out the gray. This is a kind of best buck that you want to take out. Yeah. It's another subspecies that also looks exactly like the best buck, just a little bit dark in color. It's called the Bontebok. That only um, comes in the Eastern Cape. There's some in, in a free state. There's some people that does breed with them there in Limpopo and Northwest, but they predominantly comes in the Eastern Cape. It's just a little bit darker, but best buck. It's one of the most famous and common game that you can take. We went up to about 189 meters. Uh, took the shot. We, I was, I took it a little low. It 
and blew out its front left leg. Um, it started going, we didn't really know. We had a blood trail for a little bit. And Jan was helping us track for quite a ways, quite a ways. And eventually we, we stopped finding blood, we lost a little bit of hope, and we circled back and just found it right there under a tree, perfectly just waiting for us. Well done. You did it. We did it. Today we're sitting here at Games, Games Park Plains Blind looking for uh, Impala, Warrock or Baboon and I'm sitting with Bailey and the two girls and uh, let's hope to see if they can find something at this beautiful blind. We say Ghanje goed, Ghanje wel. Thank you for the opportunity for this young huntress to join the fraternity of hunters here at Montero. Thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Thank you. Time for the blood. It's beautiful. Look at this. At least you got blood. Really nice horns on him. Lovely. Oh, he's going to make a beautiful mount. And you see the scent glands on his nose? Yeah. That's where he marks. 
how he marks his territory. Nice. What happened to his eye? Looks okay. I think it just fell in the fell in the dirt a little bit. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, so, fine. Carson, like your mom and your dad and many other huntresses and your sister. Welcome to the fraternity of hunters. <laughs> I think your mom needs to step in and give her a little paint as well. <laughs> oh. Our number one white fox sniper. It just stopped recording. No. Did it? No, it's still recording. Mm. And do you want to do one as well, seeing as you are sure. the last entry into our fraternity? <laughs> How do you feel, Carson? How did that go? Well, I felt nervous because I thought I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get a warthog. No, wait, I'm gonna get something else. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. She's anxious. <laughs> she's literally anxious the entire yeah, time. Yeah, I was very. Yeah, a lot of anchors are, she's like, should I shoot that one? Should I shoot that one? Well, fantastic. You made a perfect shot. He didn't run 30 yards <laughs> very nice. and gave him a swift end. So here we are, day three of the seven day safari with the Hardy family and we've indoctrinated young Carson here into the hunting fraternity with this magnificent Dacre. We had some amazing viewings this afternoon in the blind. We saw some bat foxes, a pair of jackals coming in, sables with the babies and um, yeah we've had a fantastic afternoon and rewarded right at the end of the day with this beautiful Dacre. He gave us the run around a little bit constantly running between the water and cover, the water and the cover. And as he was feeding around in the cover, he stepped out into the gap and I gave him a little whistle. He stopped. Carson showed excellent patience and focus to hold her shot until the right moment. Beautiful shot behind the shoulder. He didn't go 30 yards. And what a privilege to be a part of this young huntress's first harvest. So congratulations, Carson. You did very, very well. And let me just put this beautiful diker down here i want to shake your hand <laughs> oh, <laughs> well that was awkward <laughs> but good job you made a perfect shot thank you and i'm so proud of you well done thank you so chase here we are um we really didn't think we'll be here but here we are after about uh, over 12 kilometers of uh, uh blood trailing a full day later and um, phenomenal phenomenal tracking by our tracker eddie um, we actually gave up hope and um, we came around the corner and we thought you know what we're close to where we shot him with the bow initially let's uh, let's go around and maybe by some miracle he'll be he'll be back here and um, as we drove in we saw there he was he was standing um, back where, we, where this whole saga started um, you could see the blood there on the shoulder unfortunately the shot was um, a little bit high sorry about the horns it's quite windy out here there's a bad uh, weather storm on its way in and um, the shot was quite a little bit high higher than we all hoped it yeah. was um, but you know what they always says you know it's dead it's in the salt um, as long as it's dead, it was a good shot, you know, so we had to uh, um, resort quickly back to the, the, the 375 Holland and Holland Magnum with the Barnes TSX and a very quick snapshot and shuffling around to get the, get the angle and finally he turned and he didn't run, you know, five yards after the shot. So congratulations, but tell us your highs and lows on this beautiful animal. <laughs> oh man, highs and lows. Uh... Lowe's um, wounding it uh, and chasing it like that's you know that's the last thing that obviously any hunter wants to do is you know take a shot on an animal and wound it um, so yeah chasing this through the bush you know hours and hours and miles and miles um, and you know and just kind of like losing the track was very disheartening uh, and yeah like like you mentioned coming here uh, purely out of a, just a last ditch effort um, before my hunt's over with uh, yeah we jumped them. Um, you know, and they kind of just we just waited, uh, and and they came back again. So, you know, I was definitely blessed on this final, <laughs> final one with, with, with this guy. Um, just super excited, so happy that one, he's he's not in pain, he's not suffering anymore. Two, I got this beautiful, you know, trophy to take home. So, yeah, man, thank you, thank you, Montera, thank you, Eddie Tracker. Couldn't ask for a better hunt.
So this was my first opportunity after two days stalking uh, a, a Ram Impala here at Montero Safaris. It's been almost, I think, four or five different stocks we've been trying to get one. We got lucky this morning, perfect one, everything I asked for, bigger and more, uh, more impressive than I expected. Uh, exciting to be here. Started the morning off right, day two on our uh, five day excursion here at Montero. I'm really excited about it. Glad we can get this one off the list and uh, start working on the next, the next uh, wave here. That's the one who's down. He's down? He's down. Just keep an eye on him. Bingo 20. That's all. That is it. That is it. That's it. That is it. That is the brown. Wow. Look at that shoulders. Wow. Well, that's a nice loop. Thing. I had this beautiful, like a beautiful symbol. Jeez. Uh, Look at the thick banks. Yeah, it's thick. It almost looks brown because it's has so much. And it's you know, wide. Look at the main. This is the exit there. At the exit room? Yeah. That is it. Didn't go 20. He went 10. He went 10. He went 10. That's how you do it, son. Oh. Finally, we found you. Finally. Game. Wow. Finally, finally. This pool eluded us a few days now. And on our way to camp, on this weather, this wind, this cold. All right. Um, we saw this bull standing here with three other bulls and we said, okay, let's take a chance to win this in our favor. We made a good stalk and uh, just before he ran off, he took a brilliant shot. Well done. Wait, 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 wait. Reload, 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 reload. Which one? That's the one who's down. down. Ran 10 yards and it fell down. Didn't go 20. Didn't go 20. Didn't go 20. And what I told you what these, this beautiful bull, especially the black mania, the other bulls had a brown, this one of black, that means it's maturity. You can see the horns and the depth cold. This is what also that make this bull special. You know, there's another animal, they call him the Rowan. It's also got the back, backwards bar here. And uh, the only, much, a little bit bigger than this. Light in color, light, light brownish. Really? But the sable, the prince of Africa, you can't get more beautiful. The prince of Africa. The prince of Africa. But how does it feel? Well, finally, you got your sable. Day four, I, I wanted a sable this entire time. We kept on getting unlucky. They kept on uh, evading us. And uh, we saw this one and we, I'm glad we had to crouch crawl almost to, to get within range and it all worked out. I'm so excited, so happy for this. Um, it's, the, it's the prince of Africa and the, the jewel of my experience here so far. So, hell of a time. Um, thank you for all your help and everything you guys did here. Perfect, congratulations. Yes, absolutely, thank on you, your Beautiful, sir. beautiful, beautiful yes, sable yes, trophy.
There's your gimps, Buck. Oh, wow. There he is. <laughs> wow. Let's come to the side. Oh, oh wow. my God. Oh, wow. Look at this beautiful That's thing. Wow. wow. That thing. Damn, this is big. This is a beautiful bull. Oh, Look wow. at that exit hole. I thought. Oh. That's that. Yeah, that exit, yeah. Lee. Dude, I thought it was high. I was like, that looks on it. I mean, you know, shoulder would be better, but. Jesus. That it, look at that blood all down. He was running so fast, he was breathing his life away. Yeah. I'm hunting this afternoon with our main man, Peyton here, who shot this absolutely beautiful Gamesbuck bull. Um, Gamesbuck, also known as the Oryx, the desert dwellers. It actually originate from the desert. That's where they come from. Um, and another interesting fact about the Gamesbuck, the females got thinner but longer horns as males. You do get often mm. males that got these tall horns, but what makes males so beautiful is the thickness of the bases, like I showed you. Yeah. And other than beautiful markings on the Gamesbuck, it's the warrior face paint there, that black and white, that just makes him so much more beautiful. And that's why everybody in Africa or around the world loves Gamesbuck. It's because of the beautiful coloration on this thing. And uh, yeah, you can see the shot placement, what you've done is just absolutely, well, we doubted it in the yeah. at first, but it ran about 100 yards mm -hmm. before it expired. So please tell us what happened. Tell us, tell everybody here on the camera what happened during the hunt. It's day four out here. We've seen quite a few of these, but we've just been patient waiting on a great bull to catch. Uh, we were out there probably about uh, 40 yards above it, shooting down. Uh, I thought I shot a little high. We looked back on the video because it took off. As soon as I shot it, it took off with adrenaline just coming straight back. We got a little worried, but as soon as we got around to where I shot it, there was just a bunch of pink blood and we were able to fo follow it nicely and come and get the kill. But other than that, this thing is beautiful. And I'm just very glad that we found an awesome bull to take and put into our collection. Well done, my Congratulations. Thank man. you, thank you. Up, shoot him again. Okay. Can you see his shoulder? He's going to He's on his leg. He's like on his back. He's on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just give him two minutes. Just let him expire completely. Really good shot. Well done. Awesome. Well done. Well done. Let's just give him a few minutes. He's right there. So. I, I was wondering now because he was like going off as if he was yeah, okay, but yeah. you could see uh, he, he was like, going like, hey, yeah, hey, 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 he had, yeah, he was hurt. So yeah. yeah, let's just give him a few minutes. That's great. He's the biggest one between the three. Yeah, so that's great. Well, well done, man. Okay, we're gonna go check him out now. He's right there, man. Oh, wow. Look at him. Jeez, he's a monster. So, so beautiful. Yeah, just put it right here, man. I got it. Good scratch. Just can't even pick him up. Wow. Massive. So beautiful. Well done, brother. He's absolutely beautiful. Hey? 
Oh yeah. Nice coloring. Very nice. He's old as well. I wonder where the bullet is. So Chris, interesting day so far. Uh, really, really bad weather. Didn't work out for us at all this morning. The whole plan for this week was we wanted to go for a, a, a very nice kudu bull. But unfortunately, it didn't work out the way we, we were hoping for. Um, and we were just taking a last drive uh, through the farm before we were on our way back to the lodge. And um, we spotted these uh, beautiful golden wildebeest um, just standing in the plain. At least we got a beautiful trophy here. Um, he's a very mature bull. Um, he's nice and wide. We checked his teeth. His teeth has worked down to his gums. So he probably had a year left, maybe a little bit longer, but not very, I, I won't say he was going to live for another three years at all. Um, so yeah, and uh, the shot was about 60 meters, 65 yards around there. And um, he shot him right on the shoulder, exactly where he should be. So This is the end result, and uh, yeah, it worked out well. He, he ran about 150 yards before he expired. So, uh, as a lot of people know, any wildebeest of any kind is 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 a super tough animal. So, well done on that one. And uh, yeah, we used the 308 308 Winchester. So I'm pretty familiar with like blue wildebeest and uh, the black wildebeest, uh, but. Uh you know, I wasn't very familiar with the golden wildebeest. So where do these kings come from? All right, so um, there's a few different types of wildebeest, like you said. Uh, we get, we got the, the black, the blue, there's the kings, and then now obviously the gold. So um, the gold, they norm, they're predominantly from, from Botswana. Uh, they call it the Thule block. That's where they are originally from, um, but it's right across the river from us. And that's why they, they do so well here. Like you can see, he's <laughs> absolutely very a big. beast. Yeah, very big. So yeah, um, and then uh, the the blue wildebeest. We obviously have blue wildebeest here as well, but the black wildebeest comes from the Eastern Cape Free State area. That's more south in South Africa. So you you'll mainly find the the gold and the blue in in Limpopo province. Awesome! I'm very excited. This beautiful animal. It's been a great week. Thank you so much, Bernard. Great shooting, man. Montero, Montero <laughs> you haven't, it again. You haven't given the, the tracker any work <laughs> except skinning and, and caping, so. <laughs> that's, that's plenty of work. Yeah, that is plenty of work. He's, he's done a phenomenal job, but I mean, Chris has just been a great shot and just a great spirit all around. So, last day, I mean, <laughs> it worked out well. Yeah, great it's way. not a kudu, but it's something special. Great, great note to end on, for sure. Yeah. Okay, this afternoon I'm hunting here with our great friend Chad. We shot this absolutely beautiful zebra. Um, he knows the strange thing is with zebras, because this is a bird shell. You get two different species of zebra in South Africa. It's a Hartsman zebra and a bird shell zebra. And this is the bird shell with the shadow stripes here, just here between the, the black and white. You can see the nice shadow stripe. That's what makes the bird shell so unique. Um, this is absolutely a beautiful female zebra, specifically why we hunt females, what you call the mare and zebras as well, um, because of the huge abundance, the, um, you have to kill, and of course the female zebras, the mares, don't have any bite marks like the males, the males bite each other, they kick each right. other. So for a beautiful rug mount, a mare is absolutely the ones you want. We were in a tight spot. We had to belly crawl through the brush to get to the to the beginning of the plains. There was a lot of animals that would have blown our cover, so that was intense. Thorns in my hands and knees. That was a, a, a unique experience. I'm glad we did it once, though. Um, just barely got to the outside of the bush. Saw the one we wanted. 
probably rushed the shot because I was thinking that the that somebody's going to spot us and get the, the herd running. But uh, luckily, we have amazing trackers. Willie did a great job, absolutely uh, tracking this one down for us, and we ended up finding it right here. So glad that uh, it happened that way in the end. Yeah, and I think the rifle choice, the 375, is the ideal for the bush. Like we told yesterday with the Gemsbuck, there isn't a better belt rifle for the bush. And I think you Perfect. can have the marks on your face. I think that the camera can see what the 375 can do to you if you right. don't put it right. hard on your shoulder. But my oh man, congratulations on a beautiful zebra. We worked hard. So that's just one of your main animals that you came for. I finally and the whole got week it. you asked the zebra, zebra. The last day. The last day we found it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely uh, an amazing Congratulations. Hunt. Glad to be here. Well, here we are, last day of a seven day hunt and what a magnificent morning, what a way to end the hunt. Two beautiful golden wildebeest, a virtual zebra, three good shots, three PHs, three happy clients and we couldn't feel more privileged to share this experience and our hunting for conservation project here at Montero Safaris with the wonderful people of Texas. And um, you know, from their first time in Africa, Chad and his son, Peyton, Chris on the end there. Chase is becoming part of the furniture. This is his fourth trip with us here. <laughs> and they've been rewarded with some magnificent animals and it's been a fantastic trip so far. It's not over yet. We still have the afternoon, golden hour is fast approaching. So that's when the magic happens. But wow, what a privilege to share these beautiful experiences, spend time in nature with like-minded people. And again, thanks to the almighty for giving us this great opportunity. We're exceptionally grateful. This beautiful creation, this beautiful land that we call Monterra to be able to hunt and uh, share in our in our heritage and our culture of hunting and um, yeah thank you to Chris and the team our main our PHs Rudy Bernard and um, our skinners and trackers Eddie and Willie thank you so much it all comes together hunting in Africa is very much a